cities are some of the most dynamic, creative and resilient places on Earth. I think it's common to think of cities as places for people. In the process of that, we've designed and developed cities largely by keeping and intentionally leaving nature out. That hasn't been that good for us. That has meant we've developed cities that don't have enough nature to absorb air pollution or absorb excess storm water, that don't provide the kind of cooling, that actually trap heat and make them hot places. The urban heat island effect, for example, is such a common result of the way in which we've designed cities largely without nature. But as cities grow and evolve, so did the challenges. Cities drive almost every pattern that we see on the planet. So if we were going to have planetary scale sustainability, it has to start with transformation in the way we develop cities and the way that we can make them more livable for the majority of the human population. Nature-based solutions offer a new way forward, a way to design urban spaces that don't just manage risk, but actually make life better. Nature-based solutions are sometimes called ecosystem-based adaptations or green infrastructure. They are a way of bringing nature into the way that we address some of the challenges that cities face. And providing co-benefits for people and nature at the same time. Redesigning and reimagining cities as places where nature can also thrive is important for human health and well-being. It's also important that non-human species have a right to the city for a number of reasons. The most important of which, I think, is to develop new relationships between people and nature in the places where most people live. Clean air, cooler streets, vibrant green spaces, stronger communities, nature-based solutions, what we call MBS, aren't just about adding trees or restoring wetlands. They're about reshaping how we think about infrastructure altogether. And in the city context, this means things like the role of nature in providing cooling for heat wave days during the summer, in providing spaces where people can recreate and meet and socialize, which provides social benefits, the benefits of nature for health, mental health and physical health. All of these are solutions that nature provides to multiple challenges that we're always dealing with in the city context. That's the vision behind Natura. So Natura, is a global network of networks. It was conceived as a platform to enable collaboration between researchers and practitioners. Linking researchers, planners, community leaders, and policymakers across seven major world regions. All working on urban nature-based solutions to exchange knowledge. Knowing that we're gonna be seeing this and that we already are seeing the impacts of uh, extreme events and and um, global climate change impacting cities in particular, um, I were really concerned about the inability of the solutions that we have made in the past to meet that challenge. And I think that nature-based solutions can actually help. And I know some of the engineers I work with understand this, and it's, they understand that um, we need a sort of new paradigm. There's a sort of famous saying that you can't manage what you can't measure. It's very hard for us to really know how to locally tailor nature-based approaches that can work if we don't know what works, if we don't know what works where. For example, where should we put specific types of trees in cities? What species should we use? How much water resources are required? And what are the best places to put them so that they can provide shade, provide evapotranspiration, help cool hot cities that have mostly been designed for pavement and for cars? To do that properly means figuring that out in the local situations to really understand what species work best and where. Together, they've created the Global Roadmap on Urban Nature-Based Solutions, the first region-by-region -region global assessment of knowledge integrating research and practice on how cities work with nature. The Natura Global Roadmap is, in essence, an assessment of 
what do we know about urban nature-based solutions all around the world? And really to dig into and understand what are the nuances that exist in different contexts across the globe. Every city, every neighborhood, every street, every plan has its own story. And what are the gaps, what, what remains to be done in order to better understand how nature-based solutions work? What do we still need to know and how can we develop the steps, including policy steps, planning steps, implementation steps, to really drive forward a nature-based solution agenda for urban development. It's a practical place-based guide shaped by more than 80 experts from around the world, drawing from real projects, real lessons, and real partnerships. I think the future for nature-based solutions in the short term is gonna be a, a focus on a few uh, big, big problems where there's also a really clear value proposition for nature-based solutions. It's pretty clear they, they supply value. One is around managing uh, stormwater. So many, many cities around the world need to manage stormwater better, um, prevent uh, too much stormwater pouring into combined sewer systems. A very good example of urban nature-based solution would be Cheonggyecheon's uh, stream park, which we uh, demolish it a uh, gray uh, uh, concrete-based drainage system and turned it into a ecological park that and restored the stream with it. Uh, storm runoffs could be better accommodated within the urban areas and also at the same time it provides um, multifunction like you know recreational values to the city. The roadmap highlights what's working, what's next. It's helping cities think not just in terms of grey or green infrastructure but about hybrid systems that combine the best of both. Written in English, but also in other languages, you know, I think it would be more accessible to share different success stories around the world, different regions, different geographic context, different cultural context, and you know that you know researchers and practitioners can learn from these um, stories and case case examples. And a lot of areas, if you look at Europe, the US, South America, Asia, a lot of cities or a lot of countries are moving towards that in the next uh, within the next century so it really provides learning lab uh, uh, to to really try and understand how we could develop nature-based solutions within more arid contexts and what are the requirements needed today to inform the future as well the message is clear nature-based solutions are no longer a niche idea they're scalable adaptable and ready it starts with the knowledge, building with the knowledge, and then the important thing is that to really translate this research into language and information that policymakers can really uh, buy into and really adopt to become their own personal project. This is urban resilience, not as a response to crisis, but as an invitation to build cities we actually want to live in. The global roadmap on urban nature-based solutions provides the first of its kind global assessment that really helps us understand what practices work best where and therefore how we can scale them up. When we start scaling these up, it's incredibly hopeful to see how cities are gonna transform. And I think that will fundamentally change the way we think about how cities should be. Biodiversity plays an enormous role in addressing social, ecological issues in cities. Transforming the urban paradigm on the planet is about transforming the planet for sustainability. The future is green and it's already growing. With Natura and the global roadmap for urban nature-based solutions, we aim at reimagining new ways of building cities with nature. So that nature-based approaches to urban design and development become second nature. Mm -hmm.